All right, so in this video, we're going to be taking our properties of universal gravitation we've learned in the last two videos and applying them to various situations uh, in the form of practice problems that you might see on the AP or, you know, a test in your class, etc. So we'll start off with what is known as the typical, you know, satellite problem. In other words, you have the satellite orbiting an elliptical orbit with, you know, one axis R1, another R2 from the Earth, and it's going various speeds at both points in its orbit. And what we want to do is find out an equation for this velocity right here, V2, in terms of the other variables. So we start off by saying, is there any external torque on the system? Well, no, there's not. The sum of the torques on the system is zero. Therefore, we know that angular momentum is conserved. And all we have to do at both points is say, angular momentum zero equals the final angular momentum, or R1 cross with P1 equals R2 cross with P2. Now we know the equation for momentum in this case is very simple, it's just M times V, or in other words, M1 V1, or M V1 times R1 equals M V2 times R2, canceling out the M's, uh, and dividing through by R2, we get that the velocity at the second point is simply V1 R1 over R2. All right, so moving on now, we're going to be using the concept of uh, gravitational potential energy, specifically looking at uh, the calculation of escape velocity. Now, escape velocity, or v-escape as we'll uh, abbreviate it, is the velocity necessary to uh, leave a gravitational field completely. In other words, when you get out to x equals infinity, only when you're an infinite hypothetical distance away, will, you know, uh, your kinetic energy be completely dissipated by this field. So here, the kinetic energy equals zero. But we know, by definition, that at this point, the potential energy also equals zero. And because we know that E mechanical is simply the kinetic energy plus the, the potential energy, and both of those are zero, the total mechanical energy of the system here has to be zero for the object to be at escape velocity. In other words, to completely escape the gravitational field of, we'll call this the Earth, with mass big M. So, with that said, all I have to do now is calculate the initial potential and necessary kinetic energy to escape the gravitational field at this point. Well, we'll start off with U plus KE equals the e mech. In this case, that's zero. And plug in our equations for uh, both of these quantities. In this case, we have negative g, big M, little m, over the radius, the radial distance right here, r, plus the kinetic energy, mv squared over 2, equals 0. We can cancel out the little m. That won't matter. And moving this over, we get that v squared over 2 equals g times the mass of the Earth over the radius of the Earth, which I'll write with this little symbol, a circle with a cross through it. Now, moving this 2 upwards and taking the square root, we get that the escape velocity of the Earth equals 2 times g times the mass of the Earth over the radius of the Earth, all square rooted. And this is the escape velocity from the surface of the Earth. To find the escape velocity from various points in orbit, all you have to do is increase this radius to r plus whatever your height above the surface of the Earth, h, is. All right, so in this last problem that we'll be looking at, we have two planets orbiting the same sun. We have planet number one right here and planet number two looking strikingly similar to Earth and Mars. And they have respective radiuses or radii of r1 and r2, and they have some respective speeds. And what we want to find is the ratio of their two periods to one another, as well as the ratio of their speeds. So let me just, just to be clear, there's no direction involved, just their speeds. So because they're orbiting the same sun, we can start off with Kepler's third law, which states that t 
t squared over r cubed equals 4 pi squared over gm, but all this term can collectively be written as k. So we know that t1 squared equals k times r1 cubed. Likewise, uh, because this constant is true for all planets involved in the calculation, we know that t2 squared equals k times r2 cubed. Now dividing one equation by the other, we cancel out the k values, and we get that t1 over t2 all squared equals r1 over r2 all cubed, or that t1 over t2 equals uh, r1 over r2 to the 3 halves. Now, solving for the ratio of their speeds, we know that angular velocity will relate to period in terms of 2 pi over t, but we also know that omega equals the linear velocity divided by the radius. So, uh, relating the period to the linear speed as well as the radius, we get that v1 equals 2 pi times r1 over the first period and v2 equals 2 pi times r2 over the second period. Now once again dividing one through by the other we get that v1 over v2 equals these two pi's will cancel out and we get that uh, v1 over v2 equals r1 t2 over r2 t1. But we have the inverse right here of the ratio of their periods. So we can rewrite v1 over v2 as r1 over r2 times uh, r2 over r1 all to the 3 halves and then doing some simple algebra and adding the exponents we get that v1 over v2 and we'll write those just as the magnitudes of those vectors for clarity equals uh, r2 over r1 all square rooted. And that concludes our coverage of universal gravitation and with that the entire uh, AP Physics C Mechanics Barron's curriculum. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, course as much as I have and I look forward to feedback on how uh, it has helped you with your classes or just with the test in general. Thank you. Goodbye.